I think we're recording now. Okay. So this is going to be your show because I'm out of it. It's never my show. <laughs> no matter that's what how you hard say. you every try. Time, every time, that's what you say. No matter, yeah. That's what you say. Um, so we said we're going to start off with events. We are. And then what are we going to talk about? I got my whole list here, but I'm I don't have about. a list, so well, you're in I'm a narr narrator. A little bit. A are narrator. You? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you didn't do your homework. I didn't do my I homework. Oh, I'm in trouble. Usually, usually you tell me. Now, be thinking about what you want to talk about. I did look on some rivalry patterns last night, but I don't know that I came <laughs> up with much. <laughs> Hi, guys. This is Kathy and Heather from the Knot House in Frederick, Maryland. This is podcast number 10. You can find us on Facebook, the Knot House. You can find us on Ravelry, The Knot House, and you can find us on Instagram, The, the Knot House. Mm -mm, that no. one's Knot House Yarns. Knot House Yarns, excuse <laughs> me. And our website is www.knothouseyarns.com. <laughs> Bear with us, guys. It <clears throat> is Friday morning. The shop is open. Shop is open. It's rainy. So 60 degrees. We're waiting for the snow that's supposed to come tomorrow. So, yeah, we were supposed to do this earlier, but I got sidetracked. Imagine that. So, we're here now, and, um, yeah, so, um, thank you for watching. Uh, I want to say that um, we've gotten a lot of followers up since the last time that we did the podcast. Almost thank 100. You. Thank yeah. you. Thank, Thank you, you all for watching the podcast and tolerating, you know, Mom and I and our humor. Um, there's There was a lot of comments. I know we did a giveaway. Um, and, by the way, the giveaway went to Shelly Weaver. Okay. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you. Um, she got her yarn, and I think she wrote back to me and told me she was really happy with it. She was said she'd never won anything, so now she has. So we got a bunch of comments, and for a while I was replying to all the comments, and I've slacked off on that too, so I probably have some more that I need to, to get back to you. But if I haven't responded to the comments, um, it isn't intentional, and I will try to do that as I go through and get ready for the next batch of comments. Um, I so, responded to a lot of them too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sometimes I'll just be sitting there and I'll just go through them all, and you know they're so fun to read because there's a real there's a lot of of positive comments. There's a couple of of negative comments too, which you know that's got we need to hear some of that sometimes so that we get it, everybody's perspective. But for the most part, um, everybody's just very gracious and um, very complimentary uh, of what we're doing. So thank you. Um, so might as well just go ahead and talk about the next giveaway then. Do you want to? Or did you want to wait? I'm sorry, you're supposed to be in charge. <laughs> see what I mean? Let's wait till the end. We do have a giveaway, but you're going to have to wait and see what it is. Okay. I am so excited. <laughs> I am so excited. Is this I the am event part? I am so excited. Is this the event part <laughs> that we're going to talk about events now? See? She won't let me do it. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, Caitlin Hunter, Boyland Networks, is coming to little old Frederick in April. April 13th and 14th. Um, I started working on this back last fall. I think you started working on it when you were doing Sunset Highway. Before we started Sunset Highway. I had contacted her about patterns. So... Sunset Highway was new. Right. She wasn't quite as hot then as she is now. And I had said, if you ever decide you want to come to the East Coast and you want to teach, it's us. And a couple months after that, she said, I'm interested. And boy, I hopped on it. Now, I've been knowing. Yeah, we've known she was coming for a little while, but... We had, I, to, we had to pin her down on the dates a little bit, right? Well, and I wanted her to buy her ticket. I wasn't, wasn't going to have egg on my face saying she was coming and then going, oh, didn't work out. Right. So we waited till she bought the ticket before. Yes. Yes. Right. So she's coming. <laughs> she um, will be here on Friday the 13th teaching a design color work class. 
it is you you'll pick out a mo motif and design a cow and she will show you how to do that talk about colors i think some of the things you're not supposed to do things you can do the rules you can break and the rules you can't break um so that's on friday saturday morning we're going to have a meet and greet from 9 till 10 30 and then from 11 which anybody can come to the meet and greet you don't have to be signed up for the class no anybody can um, come yeah um but if you come you have to have something caitlin hunter on no you can come that's without my it. rule <laughs> i bet they will though <laughs> i'll have enough stuff caitlin hunter. that's true you got enough for everybody <laughs> i do i do um from 11 until 2, she's teaching color work with Caitlin. Um, kind of her philosophy on color work, her tips and tricks, and it's for beginners as well as more accomplished um, color work people. And there's only one spot left in it. And then from 3 to 6, she's teaching a steaking class, and it's full already. So. We're, I, I, I'm just beside myself. I'm so excited. So that is what I've got for events. What else have you got? Well, I think we should say that if you're interested in coming and you're local or somewhat local, you can find out more on our website. On our website. Yep. And um, I posted about it on Instagram a couple of days ago. And I think you blogged about it. Um, so, yeah, and there'll be more about probably about it in the blog as we get closer. Um, but yes, you can you can get the information about the classes if you go to our website at www.nothouseyarns.com. And I'm so jealous. Of what? I won't get to take any of the classes. Well, you will. No. I thought, yeah, well, we got to work on that. The door will be open. I'll be listening. I do that on well, occasion. Well, I'll be here on Friday. And I do that on occasion. I listen. You can, you know, you can go in. And I will pick her brain, bless her heart. Yeah. I will pick her brain every other minute that there is available. I told her before we started she was picking up some patterns and she said she can't pronounce any of Caitlin's <laughs> patterns. And I said, well, maybe you can get <laughs> a lesson <laughs> when Caitlin comes. It won't matter. I mean, I can know how to pronounce them and I still can't pronounce them. Oh, hopefully she doesn't get her feelings hurt. I can pronounce her name. <laughs> <laughs> so... <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. Um, I want to say something else about the event, the pop-up event. We've gotten a couple of um, inquiries about the pop-up event in May. And I want to say that um, the first place that we'll release really any kind of information will be via our, um, our blog. So if you... But it is happening again. Right. What is the date? May 3rd and 4th? 3rd, 4th, and 5th? fourth fifth and sixth I think it's fourth fifth and sixth that first Friday in May um, we've got all of our um, indie dyers lined up um, and we're going to um, I think we've already said we were going to do a, a early bird event I don't right? think we have said that but uh, we have now so we're going to do an early bird event that Friday normally we open up at five um, and go from five to nine right yes um, and we're going to do it, uh, what, what are we going to open up from 3 to 5 or 3.30? 3, 3 or 3.30 to 5. Right. For early birds. For early birds. Um, and I think we've decided on 40. But we don't have all of that quite worked out yet. But we're close. We're close. We're close to having that figured out. Um, so that'll just be, you know, a little preview of um, everything and hopefully help us kind of manage the, the traffic that Friday night um, a little better than we did last year. So that information, again, will be out on our blog first before I post it on Instagram. Um, so uh, go to the website and sign up for the blog. Um, I, um, I blog usually, I'm the one that usually blogs. Well, I say usually, I'm the one that always blogs. Um, and I try to do it once a week at least and try to focus on events that are coming up and sometimes I'll get creative and, and write better. Sometimes not. It just kind of just depends. Sometimes we do free patterns, uh, free pattern Friday. Um, and, you know, I'll usually post some of the things that, you know, mom's finished or um, working on or new yarns that we've gotten in. So, anyway, um, so I just wanted to mention that about the pop-up shop. 
um, and that is in um, in May again with Maryland Sheep and Wool. It's a big event here in Maryland um, at the Howard County Fairgrounds, and we are just about 30 miles from the fairgrounds, so it works out well. People get to go to the um, to the festival, and then they get to come to the shop, and we have a big event here too. So, and we've got a couple of special, really. Well, we've got quite a few really special people coming this year. Mm-hmm. We do. Something else I wanted to mention that we will also have a new yarn. We're not going to say who it is yet, but we'll have a new yarn when Caitlin's here. Oh, yeah. We figured that out actually last night. Last night, yeah. So, so we're excited yeah, about we're that. Yeah, we're excited Somebody about that. that is new to us. Mm-hmm. So I think, um, I know your uh, mom's in charge of the schedule, but... I'm looking at stuff here at the table. Um, so I think last time we talked about um, the cow that I had on, which was flying solo. Yes. And we were supposed to be getting in some kits from Swift, and we got we the kits in. We got the kits in. Um, we've though... sold a lot. <laughs> we've sold a lot of them. Um, do you want to? Should we get the flying solo cow and just remind everybody what it what it was? Well, and you can mention that the colors. It is in. Right, again, the colors that it, that it was done in um, gone. are gone, so, but, but this is the cowl, um, it's in a space tree coat um, design, free pattern, and it's kind of cool because it's got the split here, so if you watch the last podcast, I had this, this on, and it takes three skeins um, of uh, the Swift yarn. So, this is a really pretty combo. It's This is the Swift Bliss Sock, which is a merino um, cashmere nylon. So, then here's another one. This one's, well, I was going to say this one's close to the other one. And this is a, uh, a teal blue. That's not capturing that color um, at all. That looks like blue. It's not. It's teal. It's green. It's green. Yeah, that's really bizarre that that's not capturing that color. Hmm, interesting. Um, but you can see the brown and the the green in this one. And then more purples for mom. Now, on the website, these aren't done up in kits. No, they're not. They're right? done up individually. They're done up individually. And so, because some of the darker colors um, are used in multiple, how do I say it? Um, some of the colors are done in more than one kit. Yeah, some of the colors are done in more than one kit, just as she said. And um, so if you have any questions about it, um, you can call the shop and mom can help you figure out the colors um, for what goes good together. I think we've got like, what, four or five? Left. Four or five um, combinations. combinations left, yeah. So, and those, um, those didn't get on the website, right? Not the kits. Right, but the individual skeins are on there, but the pictures well, aren't, I don't think. Let me say here, I apologize. Here we go. with. We are going through a transition on photographing. I am learning <laughs> how to photograph. I went into a photographer, long story short, he laughed at me the entire time I was talking mm -hmm. because I said what we were doing wasn't working for me and that I knew he knew and then he did question whether I was teachable. Did he really? I laughed. That's funny. Yeah. So <clears throat> I'm working on that. So if you go to our website, there's a lot of pictures that you'll think, boy, there's four colors that are exactly the same. And that's just what the website does. It, if I don't have a picture in there, it puts a picture in there for me. Um, give me a week or two and I'm hoping it will all be better. And be like it's supposed to be so I apologize for that if there's ever any questions you can call me I'll take pictures and send them to you you know um, uh, the one thing I know right now my vintage is the Tosh vintage the Tosh vintage the pictures are not there right now the names are there so if you know what color a name is mm -hmm. then and I've right. had people order that way so I apologize again for that. I do. So let me, oops, sorry about that close up. Um, 
So like this this one uh, this one kit here with the purples and um, the white and the and the darker purple. Matter of fact, all of those colors are on there. I'm the late. pictures are mm -hmm. of that one. So this is um, purple rain, raspberry beret, and sugar plum. sugar plum fairy, which is one of her newer colors. Yeah. Matter of fact, all three of those are are new colors. Mm -hmm. Right. So those um, are on there. The green and the green speckle, the um, Song of the Sea, those are not on there. So the green that looks blue um, is called Twin Peaks. Um, the brown is Log Cabin. And this one is, yeah, Mom said it, um, this one is Song of the Sea. Um, so that's two kits. Um, but, again, um, if Mom says that they're on there, I guess they're on, the, on there. I, I thought that we got it after you stopped taking pictures. We did, but some of those skeins... Oh, that were already on there from before from when before. we've had our other mm -hmm. colors. Okay, all right. That makes sense then. Okay. So, so yeah, so, um, yeah, that's one thing. Um, as far as other new stuff, um, we've got new Malabrigo Rios in... We did new colors too. Malabrigo has got new colors. Yeah, I don't think I even saw the new colors when I came in. Well, you were sidetracked. Was I sidetracked? Yeah. And another order that should be here Monday. Oh, we don't have that. And there's Within, more new colors in mm -hmm. that one. In that one. Okay. So they won't be on the website yet either. Um, the names will be there, but the colors won't. And I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's my responsibility. That's one of my duties, and um, but it will get better. That I'm sure of. Right. Um, so, and then we got, like you said, we got the Tosh Vintage in. I think since the last podcast too, and um, we've just sold, been selling the heck out of the we have the Tosh Vintage. We've got new um, wax and wool candles. Candles in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got new. Pom-poms? Pom-poms. Some fancy ones. Now, why, why are they fancy? Well, are, they, are they real fur? Some of them are. Are they controversial? Could be. That one would look good on your head. Matches, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. <laughs> Do that again. I'm going to use some sound effects. <laughs> Oh goodness! No, that, that one, one doesn't, doesn't go. That one doesn't go. <laughs> That's the same as the other one, isn't it? No, this is the one. This is the one that you should have on your head. Is the one that's on this hat. And is this the only one like it? It is. It matches your hair. I. See. Can I take it off, or is it attached? No, you're not going to take it off. Leave it alone. Look. See? That's what mom would look like with a ponytail. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, we got new pom-poms We in. got new pom-poms in. Um, this gray is really pretty. Ooh, that is a pretty one. Yeah. Um, I've got a whole basket full of those. So, you're going to have to call us about those, too. Because... That's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to call mom and talk to her. She's fun to talk to. <laughs> I answer my phone. She does. She answers the phone no matter what time. No matter what time. No matter is. what time, no matter where she is. It, she I answers do. the phone. I do. <laughs> what do you say? How do you answer the phone? The not house. This is Kathy. <laughs> um, what I other new stuff do we have? You've got something else you were telling me about. Oh, the cocoa bag. I come in and I see these new bags. I said, what is this? It's right here, mom. And she goes, that's a new, that's a new color work bag. Well, I, they don't say it's color work. I think it's color work. It would work really well for color work. So it's a little snap bag, a mesh canvas bag. It has a flat bottom in it, but it has snaps. So you could snap these, put your yarn in, snap these, have one color coming out one side, and one color coming out the other side, and nothing's going to get tangled up. 
It's yeah. kind of nice. Or you could put three in there. Yeah, it says you can, well, you could. You could put a third one, have the third one right. coming out right there. So, yeah. Yeah. So maybe they are thinking about color work being all the rage. Could be. Could be. Gotta love Coco Knits. You know, they just, they're a simple, class it's act. Like, yeah, it's a simple, simple concepts you know, and, and great packaging. Just, yeah. yeah. Um, we also got Stephen West's new book in. Yep. Um, Lane Magazine will be here first of the week, okay. probably by Tuesday. Um, and the new Pom Pom will be here also first of the week. Okay. The Pom Pom Magazine. The Pom Pom Magazine. Okay. So let's talk. Why don't you talk about what you finished? Well, that's going to be real quick, isn't it? So, um, I thought it might. So you're, I'm going to have to rely on mom to talk about this pattern. I think it's called the two by two. It is the two by two by Angie. See how good you are, mom. So this is, um, this is just a plain hat that mom was making a bunch of these hats when, um, over for Christmas. Um, we, I think on the last podcast we talked about the hats that she had made for the boys. And, um, we like this crown on this one. Whoa. How do you, there. Because it's just, there you go, that's a good one. Um, anyway, a friend of mine um, that is uh, in fire and rescue has been after me in my previous professional life to make him a hat. So I finally did it and it took a while. Um, and I guess I just need to deliver it to him now, which is be the next challenge. Um, before, before spring gets here and <laughs> He won't be able to wear it. He might. I did send him a picture and showed it to him, and, so and he knows, he it's, knows it's finished. He knows it's finished. And uh, anyway, so this is this is for my buddy Tom um, with Fire and Rescue for Frederick County. So, so that was one. Um, and that pattern is good because it has different sizes you can do for. Um, it's easy to adjust. Yeah, it tells you about you know child size, medium, large. And it's a free pattern. It's a free pattern. Uh, who did you say it was again? The author. And or the designer, it's two by two, two by two rib or just two by two, just two by two by Angie. Okay, so that one got finished, and then, um, ooh, I don't even know the name of this hat. I do. Thank you, mom. <laughs> K O B U K. Can I see that word? Oh, wait a minute. No, you're right. This is Kobuk. This is the Kobuk hat. Um, so I used, I, again, I had posted this on Instagram also. Um, you, so you may have seen that some pictures. Maybe not. But um, you can see the, the pattern here. You can see the bobbles. Um, I tried to go with a light enough yarn that everything would show up. Um, the pretty uh, ribbing, this is done, it's, it's like a partial twisted rib, which um, of course makes the, the knit stitches stand out. Um, it was a fun pattern to do. Uh, went really quickly, actually. If I say that, that means it must have gone quickly. Um, but yeah, I was using um, Olan DK and uh, held it with mohair, a skein of mohair. Silk Cloud. Silk Cloud from Shibui. Mm -hmm. um, there was one other color that I thought would have been good to do the pattern in, though. And I'm going to actually go over and get it real salt. quick. It's Olan Salt, right? It's um, one of her more popular colors. Um, but I didn't want to use a skein of it to use as a sample, so because I'm funny that way sometimes. Do we have any of it, Mom? Yes, we do. The Olan is gone really fast, though. Yeah. Both the fingering and the DK are getting kind of slim. But we will have um, more. We'll have more Olan. Um, we've got it arranged so that we'll have plenty of it um, for, before the pop -up the, for the pop-up shop. Yep. So this is this is salt. Um, anyway, I think this one would be good good for the pattern too. Um, is this right? Is this salt? Yeah, it's salt. See, I'm doubting myself. Um, because I think. Sometimes when you use a, a speckled yarn or um, a variegated yarn, you, you lose your pattern definition. Um, this is, I would call, this is borderline for me as far as showing up pattern definition. But it's very cute. But it's still very cute. We've gotten a lot of compliments on it, and this was the pom-pom that mom picked out. 
which is very fitting. I would have never picked that pom-pom. But I didn't even say anything about it. I've sold one and a pom-pom. I know. Exactly like that. I know. So, um, yeah, that's what I finished. That's all I finished. I'll say that um, I'm about to start working on my Sunset Highway again. That um, we had a little snafu with it. I had a snafu. Um, Mom had to back out my short rows because I picked it up and was in the middle of my short rows when um, I, I guess I'd put it down. I couldn't figure out where I was, what was what, and I got very angry and I texted Mom and told her if she didn't fix it that I was just going to rip it out and I was very angry about it. So, so um, Which, just for a point, if you mark your short rows, your short rows, then you know. I don't know. It's been so long since I picked up that thing. I don't know if that even would have helped. She makes fun of me because I mark my decreases on my sleeves, but I mark my short rows until I'm done with them. Yeah. That way I can see I've got five over here. I've got six over here. That means I'm going back right. this way to do another one. So there are reasons that I do what I do. Yeah, I was really mad at myself about it. Um, but it's all backed out. But it's now. all backed out now. It's all fresh, and um, I guess you know. The moral of the story is, you know, you can. You just keep on knitting. You just need you need a mom to back out your stuff for you when you get frustrated, so that you can <laughs> just pick it up and She's, start over. What she told me was, is she was going to cut it up, and I said, please don't do that. I was please, angry. Please, please. I was angry about it. I'll come get it. I'll fix it. Well, you know, the base of of mine is a dark burgundy, and I had just finished the the hat using the Olan DK. So I go from using, I don't know, a size six needle down to my size three or whatever I'm using on the sweater in the dark yarn. I couldn't see. It's all fixed. It's all fixed now. So, um, so that's, that's my update. All right. So I finished my buds and branches. No, branches and buds. Right. You say it backwards. I do. I do. I, when I don't think about it. I mean, I know it's branches and buds. I love it. I love the Spin Cycle private label. Matter of fact, I'm out of it. She just shipped me some. Did you get the light gray? I did, because we were out of it. I still have dark gray, mm -hmm. but I was totally out of the light gray. Um, it fits great. I'm really, really happy with it. If you were going to try a Colorwork sweater for the first time, it is an easy one because it's just three and two, three of the gray, two of the color, three of the gray, two of the color. Yeah. Um, and she also used, um, as you guys have heard a hundred times, I'm sure, because we keep talking about it, uh, dyed in the wool, um, also by Spin Cycle. And that just, I think, as we said last time, because I think we showed this on the last podcast and we were- just had wasn't the, finished. It just wasn't finished. You had the sleeve left to do. Um, so, okay. All right, so that is, that's that, and then this is your Jenny sweater. This is my Jenny sweater that I'm really very proud of. I really am. Um, it is done out of Andorra, which is a sport weight, Kelburn woolen yarn, um, and this is Bohas, which I had never done before, which is you do pearls. Usually in color work, you don't do pearls, but in this you do, which it isn't puckered. It's just the, the way it, the design of it. So I'm really happy it fits too. Um, really happy with it. Now I will tell you this, that I've about decided that non-superwash makes you doubt your knitting while you're knitting it. Why? Well, I look like a... I didn't know how to knit. Oh, your stitches don't look even? Didn't look even at all until I blocked it. And then as you can see, it looks fine. So you can't question yourself. I wonder why that is. Well, I think the fibers are stickier, so they're not smooth like it is with Superwash. So when they're smooth, they kind of plump and they just go in together better. Whereas this is sticky and it kind of takes weird shapes because of your knitting. Hmm. Okay. So these are your Edinburgh sweaters, right? They are. They are. Do you, do you know which one you're going to wear when? I don't. I may wear that one every day. Why? Because you like that one better I than really, that one? 
Or you just like the way it, fe it fits you better? Or? I, I like both of them. Um, and then I have my Zwig too. Yeah, how many were you supposed to do? I was, I finished four. I had said I was gonna have five. But I gotta tell you, I'm a little tired of sweaters. <laughs> just a little. I should not admit that, I'm sh I, I should not. <laughs> um, and I have two on the needles. Two sweater sweaters? Yeah. Yeah. What are those? Well, I'm going to talk about one of them. Oh, okay. And then the other one is um, Woodford that I'm doing the purple. Oh, that's Cumbria. right. I forgot about Woodford. Yeah, it's been in timeout for a while. I know where I'm at on it, though. Mm -hmm. You won't get mad at it when you start knitting on it again. I won't. I won't. All right. So this was our knit along. That we didn't have all that many people join, mm -hmm. but um, this is Kodakus. 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 I don't know. <laughs> Where do I get that? <laughs> um, so it was the first time that I had ever done flat color work. And you know, some people say that you're crazy to do it flat. I didn't find that it was. You know, you have to purl on the wrong side, and you had to, I can't purl with my left hand, so I had to drop the yarn every time to be able to do it, but it was just slower. It really, but it wasn't that slow. I did it in a week. So, but it was fun. Color work is, I just, it's so addictive to me. And this is Olan. I think we showed the start of it last time. So this is Julie Oselin fingering that I held double. And then this is also Julie Oselin that I held mohair with. Somebody said I was an absolute crazy woman doing it as hard as I could possibly do it. But this was just the perfect color. Mm -hmm. And then this is um, Julie Oselin um, as well, the Lazoo DK. So I really... So if you had it to do over again, what would you do differently about it? Because we talked about this. If I had it to do over again, I would probably put this color where the navy is and the navy at the bottom. To kind of like balance it to make the navy be, you know, the bottom. But I will say that my tassel at the bottom kind of ties it all together. Mm -hmm. It does. Um, I think it's prettier in person too. I think you can see the color um, and the mohair, combination better in person. The mohair really is pretty with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know that you can see it, but this is a perfect example of this was my dominant color mm -hmm. in my left hand, and then this was in my right hand. Mm -hmm. Up here, I did it opposite. I did the pink oh, yeah. as dominant and the darker pink in my right hand. So if you know, if people always don't, I, I know I didn't understand that to begin with, but you can see that the dark pink kind of recesses there, and yet the dark pink on this one comes forward. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just the difference in which hand you hold it in. I need a lesson on that. And you, after you start doing it one way, you can't switch it up. Oh. Because then it gets muddy. It's an optical illusion. Well, you okay. don't, it doesn't really, it does matter because I mean that shows you the difference. Mm -hmm. You know, your non-dominant color recesses and your dominant one comes forward and it really does. I mean, you can tell yeah. here. Um, I didn't really so realize. So say that again, your dominant color then is in your right hand? No. Your dominant color is in your left hand, which is again, backwards of what you would think. Right, because you just think dominant right hand because a lot of people are right-handed. Exactly, but it's it's your left hand. All right, so opposite then, okay. Yeah, and I really didn't do that on purpose, but that goes to show what happens if you don't do it on purpose. Now, I, I'm fine with it. I mean, you know, nobody else would know it but me, and if I didn't point it I out, like it. nobody would notice. But it wasn't, I was afraid because I've heard you don't, do color work flat, but it was fine. It's just knitting and yarn. That's what right. I say. Just so yarn. you get mad and you want to cut it. <laughs>
because you want to be done. So, all right. I have got a couple things on the needle. Just a couple? Just a couple. So this is just a brioche scarf for Paul Tenney. Is that the same one that Donna was working on? No. Okay. This is brioche. Hers is not. Hers is a no mistake rib. Okay. Or broken rib. Yeah, I sent Mom a picture of Paul in this old scarf. Scarf that I made him when I first the, the started man, knitting. Paul's my husband. He's he's always cold. But he's also six seven, and I'm a firm believer. I'm not very far. Let me tell you, <laughs> I'm a firm believer that it needs to be as long as you are tall. But he'll get this. He'll get this. <laughs> he's always giving Mom a hard time about his sweater. He never gets. Well, I got the. Back. He doesn't even know you're working on that. I don't think. I got the back of his sweater done, and I had to add nine inches everywhere. <laughs> so, I'm doing this, by the way, in Shalimar Enzo Aaron, okay. which is a merino cashmere um, nylon, and he'll really like it. Yeah. He will really um, like and it. And so, I just want to say something before I forget. I'm going to try to do the show notes for this podcast. Um, the podcast may come up first. And then me do the show notes on Ravelry. So you, you'll be able to find the show notes on Ravelry in our group. Um, I started doing show notes at the beginning when we started doing the podcast. But I didn't think anybody really cared about the show notes. But then recently some feedback we've gotten was, Heather, can you please do show notes? Um, so I will try to capture the yarns, the pattern names um, of the things that we've shown there. So just... Well, the brioche scarf was by um, Pearl Soho. Oh, okay. It, and it's a free pattern. It's a free pattern. Okay. Now, it was done um, in fingering, and I'm doing it in worsted. So I changed to a cast on of only 43 and number seven needles. Okay. So I probably just need to take this piece of paper with me when I'm doing the notes. Okay. So my Olympic knitting is... The Immortalist. By? By Caitlin Hunter. <laughs> and I am almost done. I stayed up way too late last night. What do you think about those colors? I don't know. What do you guys think? Now, this middle color is showing up as a blue. Well, I wonder what's up with the teal. And How come it's, teal's not showing up? It's very teal. So it's teal and pink rather than blue and pink. Looks good there though. <laughs> Maybe blue would it have looks been very, better. It looks very regal, doesn't it? Well, I was that's kind of the colors. I was going for jewel tones, and that was kind of the colors that I was going for. Um, so fun. So fun. It looks a little narrow, but I will say I've got plenty to block with. Mm -hmm. I was very... So does it have a same rib at the top? It does. So I am four rows from the ribbing. Yeah, that's really pretty. You said it was hard to pick colors for it. Well, it, it was hard for me to pick colors. There's um, five colors here. And it was hard for me to pick colors. Mm -hmm. Usually is not. I wanted Well, to three colors is always easy to pick. Right. You know? I wanted where the teal is, and I think it would have looked fine if I would have done purple. That was my go-to, of course. I don't know. I think somebody talked you out of purple. I think they did. But, <laughs> I wonder who that was. Who wanted teal? I don't know. Why did you let them talk you into it? <laughs> so, I will have that done by Sunday, I think. Okay. And, you know, I don't know what you guys are going to do for samples while I'm gone. What do you mean for samples while you're gone? What are you talking about? When I go to Edinburgh... Oh, you're going to take all the, all the knitting. Of course. All the shop samples. Yeah, I am. And you're going to take that one with you, too? Yeah. Okay. I have to have some credibility. Okay. Last year, all I had was some fingerless mitts that were color work that I did But they were pretty. They were gorgeous. Carissa made you those, just specially for the trip. She did. But that was, and I didn't admit to it that I hadn't done them. 
Okay, so what's the other one you're working on? All right, so the other one is also... Caitlin Hunter? Yeah. Did I know about this one? Yeah. Oh, is this the... Um... This was the one that I kind of started. She sent it to me. I got... The numbers didn't work out, and she was about to release it anyway. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I don't know how you pronounce this one either. Where's the... Oh. Nelchina? No. N-E-L... N-E-L... I see... No, N-E-L-C-H-I-N-A. So, this one I thought was a cardigan, though. It is, and the pattern is for either. Which I didn't know when I started it. I thought it was just going to be... A little graphics. I dropped it. You dropped stitch the stitch marker? marker? Yeah. Um, I didn't know she was going to do it... So what are you doing about the numbers being off? I mean, is that just the sizing, or did she correct the... I'm assuming, I haven't looked at it. I'm assuming she's corrected it. Oh, okay, okay. But either the numbers were wrong, or how you did the last increase was wrong before you separate for the sleeves. Because you got it before she released the pattern, I right? Did. So, okay. So... Yeah, that's a really pretty color combination. What yarn are you using for that, Julie Oslin? I am, Julie Oslin DK. Are we getting more D Julie Oslin DK in, or are we yes. only getting fingering? No, we're getting DK, DK. in. DK, yes. okay. Yes. So, and you can see I have my steaking panel right there. I've not ever steaked. Well, somebody, so an expert's going to be here soon. Chris, well, not soon enough, but. Chris is taking her class. Yeah. So, in case I don't get to listen to that one. Mm-hmm. But. That's the start of it. I have got one more increase to do, and I'll separate for the sleeves. But I am really, really, really pleased yeah, with it. Yeah, that's pretty. Really pretty. It's heavier than your other sweaters, though. It looks. It's know? DK, yeah. and I don't usually do DK sweaters. Yeah. You know, when you've been short and squatty all your life, you don't need any more to it. That's going to be a good picture. <laughs> <laughs> so, I usually do fingering or sport. I don't do anything heavier than that. Oh, I do want, you know, you guys want me to tell you things. Oh, yeah, that was one of the feedback we got. We need more tips from Kathy. Well, so I ask her, are you working on your tips? Where's my needles? I don't know. I'll be right back. The assault point that everybody is doing in the shop, which is... Still. Still. I don't have it on today. You don't have it. She, she wore it every day until people started talking about her. Right. And that's a, a Magpie Fibers design. It is. And it is Magpie and Spin Cycle. Yeah. Or Damie Hunter. I'm not sure if she has it listed under Damie Hunter or Magpie, the pattern. I think it's interchangeable. Okay. Um, you have to do a provisional cast on. And I've never been happy with provisional cast ons because they never worked you end up having to pick it out. Well, I found, no, Carissa showed me this one, where you crochet it. Well, you can't, you gotta get up higher. I am. You crochet it on to your needle. You start out with your slip knot on your crochet hook. You put your crochet hook in front of your needle and you bring your yarn behind and you Pull it through your slip knot. I think you might need to get just a little bit closer, Mom. Okay. Here, why don't you just, here, let's just tilt it down a little bit. Okay. Okay, and then. All right, so you start out, you have your slip knot on your crochet hook. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. It is in front of, the crochet hook is in front of the needle. You wrap your yarn behind and you pull it through your chain. All right. Does that count as one? That's one. You're gonna crochet hook in front, yarn behind, through. Crochet hook in front, yarn behind, and through. And what that does is that gives you a cast on. 
So you've got three stitches casted on right now? I have three stitches casted on. And what you do is you put a knot in this beginning so that you know that is not the end you pull from. Quote Carissa. Not the end you pull from. Because if you try to pull from this end, it won't pull out. What do you mean pull from? At the end, when you want live stitches, you have to take this out. Right. Okay. So. Oh, so that's not the end you pull from. So that's not the end because it's got a knot in it. Right. Okay. Because afterwards, you, you know, you won't know which end is which. Because it just won't come out as easily if you pull it. It won't come out end. at all. Okay. You'll have to okay. pick it out. Whereas this I end, have had to do that before, I think. Whereas this end will, when you get finished, you'll pull from this end and it just pulls right out. Miraculous. No picking it out. Just stitch by stitch, you pull it out. Put it on the needle. Pull it out. Put okay, it well, on the needle. Okay, show us one more time. All right. So your slip knot is on your crochet hook, crochet hook in front of your needle. Yarn goes behind, and then it, you pull it through you the... You pull the crochet hook through. Yes, through the loop, the, okay. or the yarn, mm -hmm. through the loop. And it, it's a nice cast on. Hmm. I don't know that they can see that very well, the way you did it, but... All right, let me do it one more time. See, this is what I was afraid of. All right, crochet hook in front. Yarn goes behind. Then you just pull it through. You pull the yarn through your slip knot on your needle, on your crochet hook, and you're ready to start all over again. Crochet hook in the front. And pull through. So when you pull through, that leaves a stitch on the needle. It does. The stitch isn't on the crochet hook, it's on the needle. Right, and that's because you've taken it around the back. Okay. If you don't take this yarn around the back... See how helpful I am? Yeah, you are. <laughs> All right. Anyhow, um, I've showed everybody in the shop how to do that. Thanks to Carissa for showing me how to do it. And it really works, and that's the great thing. Usually, if you do the chain... You know, that's how people think of a provisional. You do a long crochet chain, and then you have to get you. That's knit, how I've done it. You knit into the bump. Mm -hmm. But if you don't knit into the right place. Then you get a knotted mess when it you won't, try to rip it out. Right, it won't pull out. So you end up having to snip it out. But this, I guarantee you. And what is it called? A crocheted cast on? Mm hmm So you can, can knit. You, can you people, can knit you YouTube Pearl, it? Knit Pearl Hunter has got a good YouTube on it. Okay. She has some good YouTubes anyway. Knit Pearl Hunter? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so that's... That's your tip. That's my trick for today. Okay. Um, with the salt point, you have to do the provisional cast on because you're knitting it in the round and you do a long tube and then you have to Kitchener it together. So... It's quite a popular design, I have to say. That's... I'm out of spin cycle yeah, again. Pretty cool. It is. Everybody just and it the the thing that's really fun about the spin cycle and I always go ahead and wind the yarn after they pick it so that they can see is is that it stripes. Mm -hmm. And how it turns out is nothing like what you think the skein looks like, which is really kind of cool. Yeah. Hey, what are you wearing? I am wearing um, the slouchy cow by Shibui out of Birch and Silk Cloud. We've talked about it before. Birch and Silk Cloud? Mm -hmm. You remember how many skeins it takes? One of each. Really? That's all? It's got short rows. Carissa did it. Yeah. I'm not doing it if that's short rows. <laughs> I shouldn't say things like that because short rows really aren't that hard. Especially German ones. Yeah, which is what I usually do, but... You did half and half. You didn't do all the Germans. I don't know how to do the other way. Well, maybe it just looked like you did have a I'm telling you, there's no telling. There's no telling. We just get to start it fresh now. Um, and oh, what are you wearing? So I'm wearing um, Across the Pond, which was um, an Andrea Mowry pattern that was released last year at Edinburgh 
um, with um, the Spin Cycle Girls. This is their um, <coughs> private label. This is the dark color. We have um, a good amount of this. And this is... Uh, dyed in the Wool. Dyed in the Wool. And we talked about this because it took me forever to finish it. Um, and you forgot to twist it when you cursed it together. Remember? Remember it was supposed to be twisted? It was supposed to have, you know, a twist in it. But. I don't think I knew that, though. You didn't when you did it. Right. But I'm used to you knowing everything. Well, I hadn't knit it, so I hadn't read it. You just gave it to me to Kitchener. <laughs> so no pattern, pattern. It's no all nothing. my fault. It doesn't matter. It looks great like it is. So it you does. can either twist it or not twist it. It That's really warm. Um, and it looks great with denim. I also think it would look good, though, with a bright color in it. Um, I may do another salt point with a bright color. Well, it would be fun for spring. Except it would be warm for spring. True. It would be warm. That's the reason I like to wear it. So. Is because. It's warm. It's oh, we got to talk about the giveaway. It really is warm. Before we end. All right. So, w we went to Vogue. Oh, yeah, we went to Vogue Knitting we to Live. Vogue. Yeah, Friday we did. night. Mm -hmm. um, we took the train. I, I love to do that. Found found a couple of things. A couple of things. Yeah. Um, so we bought, for you guys, two of Magpie's special colorway. What's it called? Highline. So it's really pretty. Yeah, that was just her special Vogue colorway. And I don't think she's doing it anymore. Yeah. I mean, I think it was just then and she sold yeah. out. And I picked out a... Another looped London bag. Looped London bag. It's pink and green. It's really pretty. It's got little... Is that little shamrocks on it? No. No. So, it's the little bag and two skeins. I don't know why I always think everybody needs two skeins. But I do. I think they need yeah. two and not one. So what are we going to do again? Just um, It'll be a random drawing. You have to comment on the podcast. And you have to be a subscriber. And you have to be a subscriber. And we'll just randomly do it. So today, I will do it before I leave on the 13th. Let's do it the 5th of March. The 5th of March. Okay. March 5th. Mark, next time on the podcast, we'll probably hear more than we want to hear about Edinburgh. If I come back. All right, guys. Um, shop's open, and we got to gotta get going here. But thank you again for watching. Again, watch for the show notes. Um, leave a comment. and Remember to subscribe. Yep. And subscribe to our blog, too. So that way you can find out more information about the pop-up in May. So... All right. Bye. Thanks for watching. Thank you.